Institutes of Seracolity. There are various indicators. I think uh, this question not only come from you. I got so many questions on this. And I believe some friends of mine uh, also do the same thesis uh, on this. You may want to refer like, uh, this. But the, uh, this, the, the, the effectiveness of Shara Committee uh, is for Takaful, not for banks. So if you want to on the bank, perhaps you can do it for this. So there are various indicators that you may want to, to use. First, uh, in terms of the uh, responsiveness of Islamic Bank, uh, of the Shara Committee members, responsiveness to the co queries. Because uh, every day we are bombarded with emails by the bank. <coughs> okay, sometimes two, three. So how fast basically you respond to the queries, resolve the issue. Okay, normally the bank will give you time from 24 hours to 72 hours, one day to three days. So the moment you exceed this uh, uh, timeline, then you are not effective in responsiveness on the queries. The second one is in terms of uh, attendance, meeting attendance. In fact, uh, this also the indicator uh, provided by the Shia government framework to the tent and the Bengal Malaysia, where the Sharia committee member in Islamic Bank and Finance in Malaysia under the purview of Central Bank of Malaysia have to attend a meeting at least 75% of the total meeting that we have in the year. Uh, under the Sharia government framework, Islamic financial institution have to have a meeting, Sharia committee meeting, at least one in two months. But in normal practice, we have one in a month, sometimes twice in a month. In the context of Afin, officially we have one in a month, but sometimes we have that special meeting, so that we have twice in a month. And we, we don't have meeting during Ramadan, because we spend all the day and night in masjid, baca Quran, and so on. With your, uh, sorry, Yatikaf. So, okay, yeah. And we don't have a meeting in December because all Sharia committee go for holidays <laughs> to release their stress and others or to use all remuneration for <laughs> spending and their own consumption. So responsiveness, the second one is the activeness in the uh, meeting. Kehadirannya, regular attendance responsiveness, and then the activeness during the meeting. How active they are. Okay? How they can respond to various uh, issues and cases presented to them. Okay? So these some of the quantitative approach used by uh, many researchers to measure the effectiveness of Sharia committees. And some researchers use how much the decision made in a meeting is one of the measurements as well. In, a, in, one, in a, every meeting, how much the decision that can be made? In, every, in, in one year, how much the, the, the decision uh, that they have already made and how much the product that the Shara Committee have already approved in one year? Okay. Another measurement for the effectiveness of Sharia Committee is how we can mitigate or reduce the amount of tainted income resulting from Sharia non-compliant transaction. How we can ensure that the whole operation activities and business activities are Sharia compliant by way of looking at the uh, minimal uh, number of Sharia non-compliant transaction. Because in Sharia committee report, we have to publish any everything that we are doing. Number of events, Sharia non-compliant events, the amount of the income, tainted income to be channeled to charity, to be refunded back to the customers, and also the amount of zakat, as well as GSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, distributed to the, uh, to the beneficiaries or to the needies. 
this sums perhaps if not comprehensive but this sum of the quantitative uh, punya indicators lah untuk itu ada yang melihatnya from the qual qualitatifnya uh, from the perspective of independency integrity how we can measure that integrity independency uh, honesty apalagi confidentiality uh, and, 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 and others, and other missions. Any, anything you want to say? Okay. Any other question? This kind of. So, how we can mitigate this kind of fatwa shopping mechanism exists in our industry? We have to have various lines of defense. Meaning that the decision on specific issues of product are not only determined by the Sharia committee. They have the higher committees that want to decide whether the decision of Sharia committee at the banking level are actually reflecting a Sharia compliant aspect. Like in the case of Malaysia, the product that you approve at the committee level have to be submitted to Sharia Advisory Council for their further deliberation and approvals. So sometimes we have already approved the product in the banking le level, but when it comes to Sharia Advisory Council of Bank Negara Malaysia, they will reject because they have already that <coughs> requirement, mechanisms, parameters, and criteria whether this product is approved or not. So by having this kind of two lines of defense, at least, we can mitigate the possibility of the occurrence of fatwa shopping or fatwa coming from uh, no, uh, what we call, no qualified Sharia advisors. In the case of Malaysia, uh, the breach to Sharia compliance is an object of crime. Meaning that if the fatwa decided by Sharia committee is proven to be in conflict with Sharia requirement as evidenced by Sharia Advisory Council resolution, for example, or the concept that has been agreed by all Muslim jurists Sharia scholars, then our fatwa is deemed uh, what we call the uh, in breach or in conflict to the Sharia uh, compliant aspect, then the Sharia committees are responsible or liable for financial penalty. That's why we have to be very careful at Sharia committee in Malaysia. Because our fatwa is not only accountable and assurable before God, but also before Bank Negara Malaysia. Particularly after 2013, uh, 2013, after the issue of IFSA, Islamic Finance and Services Act, where Sharia compliant become an object of crimes that include the fatwa and decision made by the Sharia committee. So if the decision made by the Sharia committee is deemed to be in conflict with the Sharia principle, the Sharia committee who provide this fatwa, who decide on this ruling, will be held liable for financial penalty not exceeding 25 million ringgit no rupiah <laughs> or equivalent to 75 million juta yeah, we have from Indonesia so yeah. or and kalau tak kalau tak atau dua-dua imprisonment each years that why kita sebagai syarat committee are exposed to this kind of penalties okay 25 million and that way uh, and imprisonment so we have to very prudent in this, this deciding any issues presented to us otherwise we are head liable that's why now uh, the Sharia committees and the association of Sharia advisor in Malaysia we call ASAS or we have also IB Association of Islamic Banking in Malaysia propose to Islamic Bank to provide what we call professional indemnity. What does professional indemnity means? 
professional indemnity is a basically coverage or insurance that can cover any potential fatwa risk made by Sharia committee. So in the event that the fatwa of the Sharia committee are in breach of the regulatory requirement of Sharia principles as determined by Sharia Advisory Council of Negara Malaysia, then there is a takaful operator or insurance company that can cover or can indemnify the risk of 25 million. Otherwise, nobody wants to become a Sharia advisor. Sebab takut 25 juta. Kena jual semua tanah rumah pun tak cukup. Kena bajunya pun kena kena jual. 25 million is very is very is very heavy task. And the include of officers. So now any people, any person, any staff involved in Islamic banking and financial product are liable for this provision, penalties and imprisonment. Okay, so the Central Bank of Malaysia will look who who is the person in charge for this kind of Sharia non-compliant breach, and then the liability will be subjected to them. Okay. Uh, that's all. Any other question? Yes, please, my brother.